Samoa Joe and another NXT talent have been released. Plus, a major SmackDown star is returning tonight. And a New Japan Wrestle Kingdom match went off the script. We'll talk about it in the wrestling news right now. About eight months ago, I sat in this room via a Zoom call as the world reeled from pandemic-based nonsense and told you that Samoa Joe was being released from WWE. Fast forward eight months and here I am sat in this room with pandemic-based shenanigans everywhere, telling you once again that Samoa Joe has been released from WWE. So uh, that came as a bit of a shock last night to all of us. Uh, Andrew, gutted, right? We're gutted. gutted. Absolutely gutted. The man comes back. The man wins the NXT Championship. The man then relinquishes it not long after. And uh, I, I, I mean, I think I speak for all of us when we say we were very excited to see Samoa Joe back on our screens again. Whether it was in his authoritative role that he was in or when it was like, oh no, he's coming back to the ring. We were all incredibly excited about it. But um, unfortunately, yeah, it was, uh, it was cut short too soon. It very much felt like... Um, at least to me, obviously, you know, he, he, he came out and said he had an injury and had to drop the belt and everything. It, it That was the start of what felt like things were about to change, you know? Mm. So yeah. I was, yeah, I think you and I were very skeptical when they're like, oh, Samoa Joe is unable to, to come. Is he mm. there? Yeah. Mm. Uh, Five for Select have uh, added a few more details to this story. Thank you very much to Sean Rossap and the team. Uh, Joe was actually released on Wednesday, uh, but the news of his release didn't break until last night. So this goes back to what uh, Sean and the team were told by WWE in that no active wrestlers were being released during this round of cuts, which gives you an indication as to how WWE perceived Samoa Joe. Like Timothy Thatcher, like Danny Burch, no more actively competing, but more in coaching capacities. And that is exactly what Joe had been doing. He gravitated to a coaching role uh, as part of NXT with no plans uh, put forward for an in-ring return. Many have seen this as a further dismantling of what is being called as Triple H's NXT. We've seen a few of those uh, heavy hitters, those movers and shakers that worked with Triple H to turn NXT into the black and gold super indie that many of us knew uh, since gone from the company. Uh, one higher up within WWE told Fightful that Joe has handled the situation, being released once again, as professionally as possible, considering the last few years he's had uh, he's had here. That, that is easier said than done. Many other indie promoters have reached out to Fightful and other sources to check on Samoa Joe's availability going forward. Samoa Joe has also uh, broken his silence on his release, uh, saying extremely fortunate and uh, grateful to all young and amazing talent I had the pleasure of working with in the past months. Only saddened at the loss of an excuse to see their continued growth and achievement. I am very excited for their future and mine. This suggests that Joe is far from done in the wrestling world. So mm. we... Andrew, I turn to you, sir, with your, your arguably too big hat full of great truths. <laughs> Uh, on the world of wrestling, and I say, where does Joe go, yo? I um and and I I would like to see this happen, you know. I, again, I pitched this in the AW nine pitches for 2022, not thinking that Joe was perhaps going to be released this soon. Um, I th I would very much like to see a rematch between CM Punk and Samoa Joe in AEW. Um, that would be very nice to see. Although you know, Joe's had such a Joe was such a big and prominent name in, in TNA and Impact Wrestling as well. And uh, I mean, to see him go back there would also be amazing. I think Impact are, are doing no nothing short of amazing stuff at the moment. They're, they're really up in their game. And I think to get Joe in on that would be incredible. Um, do you know what? I don't mind. I think, I think Joe feels very ready to be able to go out and do sort of whatever he wants to do. It feels like he's very much, uh, considering his injuries and everything as well, I mean, I mean, obviously he's, you know, you've got to take time out and be on the sideline, sidelines for a little bit there. But I think 
I think Joe feels very ready to come back in some capacity, and absolutely, whether it's his uh, whether it's his final tear, his last uh, his last run, I'm not really sure, but um, I think there's there's at least something special in the tank. One more time, something big for Samoa Joe. I love the idea of, of 2022 being the year where Samoa Joe um, doesn't just go. I know you say like you love the idea of Joe in AEW, and mm. and I would say I, I love the I prefer the idea of Joe spending 2022 just almost almost just like having that one more time around with places. Yeah. Like I love the idea of him as you said going to Impact Wrestling. He was a, a, a remarkable part of the X division there. Uh, had some 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 stellar matches. What had arguably some of one of the best main events that TNA ever put on Unbreakable mm. 2005. Um and and I love the idea of him doing stuff with them. Also, there is something that really warms my soul about the thought of if Ring of Honor uh, ends up coming back in some mm. way, shape or form, the first person to walk down the aisle to welcome back Ring of Honor being Samoa Joe. Yeah. Like that is a really lovely thought. I'm not suggesting that you have you give Joe a full time run in Ring of Honor, but certainly have him in an ambassadorial role for mm. that promotion is amazing. But then since then you've had places like New Japan Strong rise to prominence. You know, you've had New Japan taking steps in very different directions. And I think Joe could play a really key part in in all of them. I think what's what's nice is with a release with someone like so it's never nice when someone loses a gig, but with someone like Samoa Joe, you know that there is so much uh, prospect going mm. forward for what he could end up going on to do. Um, Joe wasn't the only name that was announced. Has also gone from the company during this week where we have seen releases from behind the scenes in NXT. Gabe Sapolsky also gone from nxt he put out a tweet yesterday saying looks like the end of the road thank you everyone love you all pw insider and fightful later confirming that sapolsky was done with wwe he's been working behind the scenes in nxt since 2018 uh, but he started his time in ecw he is very much a paul Heyman guy is gabe sapolsky uh, he worked as a booker for ring of honor he was vice president for dragon gate he was the founder of evolve which wwe bought back in 2020 uh, and in a similar vein to Samoa Joe, Andrew, not so much with a presence, but certainly with a mind like Gabe Sapolsky, mm. a promotion couldn't go far wrong. Exactly, you know, it's um, as we were saying yesterday. It's very, it's very crazy to to think these people, Samoa Joe, William Regal, and now Gabe Sapolsky as well, that they've just been let go when they have so much. They've just got an an untapped pool of knowledge between them all. You've got. William Regal and Samoa Joe, who could be absolutely... You'd want them with you. You'd want them to train the next lot of talent because they're a safe pair of hands. They've been through it all. They've done this and that. They know what to do, what not to do. And with Gabe Sapolsky as well, it's the same, I guess, with the business aspect as well. You know what to do, what not to do. He's been around the block a lot. Like, he's done a lot of different things. And um, and for WWE to, to, to cut them off uh, is, is crazy why you wouldn't want that just that knowledge right there um but again as we were saying as well yesterday and, and today too with Samoa Joe like wherever these people go they are such a huge asset and acquisition for any any company that picks them up so I mean granted it's horrible as you were saying when when someone loses the job but they're gonna bring a lot of incredible stuff to a lot of a lot of different promotions now and that's incredibly exciting to see where where things go from here absolutely uh, more news on releases that we've seen this week uh, via cultaholic.com as we get it uh, if you have kicked your ball into the big dog's yard you've got a couple of hours to go and get it back because <laughs> <laughs> because roman reigns returns to smackdown That's tonight <laughs> thank you very much get ball out of yard oh. i know i know your dad um, <laughs> But Roman Reigns back on SmackDown tonight. We haven't seen Roman Reigns uh, for about a week. Mm. Uh, this is because he tested positive for COVID. And, or, or, or I don't know whether he was tested positive, but, uh, but due to COVID-related circumstances, he was unable to compete at day one. Mm. This led to uh, the wild booking decision uh, to, to put the WWE Championship on Brock Lesnar. Uh, Brock Lesnar said on a Monday he will be on SmackDown on Friday. And WWE put out a tweet last night saying, breaking Roman Reigns has been medically cleared and is set to return at tomorrow's SmackDown by B that was sent last night so tonight you get it what will Brock Lesnar have in store for their explosive confrontation Ooh. 
I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> An F5, perhaps some some maybe uh, a, a Paul Heyman on a pole match. Who knows? Yeah, so SmackDown is going to be interesting tonight with yeah. with Paul Heyman uh, obviously now on the the other side of the mm. fence. Uh, um, I'll be interested to see what they do. So SmackDown should be uh, an interesting watch tonight because apparently WrestleMania plans aren't changed. Like whilst wow. there are still, whilst the road, the road to WrestleMania still has the the end point is still the same, mm. but they're now taking the scenic route. You know, instead of going straight through the city center, they want to cut through the countryside and oh. and, 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 and you know and and, see, and and go and visit you know Auntie Belinda on the way. <laughs> I don't know. Quite a wild weekend uh, for professional wrestling. SmackDown and Rampage tonight. Impact Hard to Kill on Saturday. And we've got the small matter of Wrestle Kingdom Night 3. Uh, we're going to take a quick look back at Night 2. There were some injuries coming out of that show. Uh, Dave Meltzer revealing that Jeff Cobb hurt his knee on Night 1 in that six-man tag, teaming with Will Ospreay and Great O'Khan, uh, and injured it further uh, in the match against Naito on Night 2. Two. We don't know the severity of the injury or if he'll miss time, but we do know that it's a it's, it's a notable injury. And Kenta came out of Wrestle Kingdom Night 2 in quite a bad way. New Japan putting out a statement saying, after his match in the Tokyo Dome, Kenta has sustained a dislocated left hip, a broken nose, tendon damage to his finger, and severe lacerations to his back. As a result, he will not be cleared to participate at Wrestle Kingdom 16 in Yokohama Arena on Saturday, January the 8th. We apologize to fans who are looking forward to seeing Kenta wrestle and appreciate your understanding. Kenta had a, a war with Tanahashi that was, on night was, two as well. It was insane. The high fly flow off the ladder as well. Oh my goodness gracious me. Those uh, The New Japan tables look like actual very real tables they look very thick compared to the ones we see in AEW and uh, WWE and uh yeah that was a battle i mean the the state of of him afterwards when you when you just looked at him he he, he looked like he was in a bad way as well so um it's unfortunate i it, it's really horrible to see 2022 kicking off with so many injuries on AEW side as well and uh and now on the New Japan side too, like I really do hope for a speedy recovery from both. Jeff Cobb was pushing through and uh, really trying his best to put on a fantastic match as well on, on both occasions, on both nights. And uh, yeah, just really wish the best for both of them. And I hope they come back very strong very soon. It's funny you mentioned how like January starting off with, with some injuries, with quite a few injuries. I mean, one thing January would be known for was a major return from an injury. We're talking uh, Shibata, who returned to in-ring action at Wrestle Kingdom as well this past week. And um, the match was announced, the match that he was set to have uh, with when Narita was set to happen under catch wrestling rules mm. with no strikes allowed. We saw Shibata take the microphone before the match started, declare the match would now be under regular pro wrestling rules. Uh, Andrew, that wasn't planned. That wasn't <laughs> something they wanted to do, according to Dave Meltzer, who's, who says that the moment that that promo went down, where Shibata said, it's just going to be a regular match. Meltzer said everybody was freaking out backstage. Nobody knew what was going on. This includes the main people in the company. They didn't know. Nobody essentially knew Shibata was going to go out there and do a real match. He went out there. He told the ref. He told the fans he was doing a regular match. He went and did a regular match. He since said in the press conference afterwards that I'm only going to do regular wrestling matches now. Like He was adamant that he wanted to come back and come back proper. Yeah, that... that the huge swerve there him just being like probably to officials and everything as well yeah no i'll i'll I, I won't do any regular matches we want uh you know we won't do strikes and stuff and then him just coming out the big balls on this man coming out and just being like <laughs> hello no we're having a regular match like i mean i can imagine everybody backstage was incredibly scared obviously after all the uh all the things that has that has happened with shibata most notably you know him uh his signature move being a headbutt and then him being taken out of action because of all that as well. Like he, uh, he very much put everything into his headbutts. So that must have been scary for officials to be like, oh no, I hope, I hope he's all right. This is going to be a bit, a bit worrying. And even for us as fans watching it, like we don't want to see anybody really get hurt or anything like that, you know? And, uh, and it's a scary thing to see, like the, the clips that you see of Shibata on, on YouTube and everything as well of him. You can, you can oh, tell. The, 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 the actual horrible. injury itself, mm. just even now when, I, when I've watched it recently, 
just just makes my stomach turn. Yeah, it's, it's just oh, geez. it's it's not nice to see. So um, I mean, as long as uh, as long as he stays away from doing anything like that, you know, then uh, and if he feels comfortable doing it, fair enough, more power to him. I just hope he stays safe and and. Uh, yeah, I hope I hope uh, everyone can come to an agreement. I hope he's not doing this anymore. Somewhere he's like, no, I'll do it this way, and then he comes out like, ah, we'll, we'll, we'll do it my way instead. Of. You can't you can't deny a professional the chance to get out there and actually wrestle the way he wants to. Mm. So, uh, well, more on more on Wrestle Kingdom across the weekend at cultaholic.com, and more news as we get it at cultaholic.com, and later today on the YouTube channel as well. So until later, keys keys, love you, bye.